What is up Kilo Crew and welcome to today's video. Today I wanted to answer all of your prayers and do a Trader Joe's cheat day sort of challenge. Just like my dollar store cheat day, I'm going to do nothing but 10,000 calories of foods just from Trader Joe's. I really hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be a nice mixture of like international foods, all sorts of stuff. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But first, if you'll notice I'm wearing my old posing suit. So it's been a really long time since I have done a physique update. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little physique update for y'all. A lot of you guys have been asking kind of what I've been looking like, how I feel about my current weight. So I'm gonna do that really quick and then we'll get straight into the food. I will see you guys doing a little posy posy in front of this natural light, which is very flattering, but I'm just happy I can still fit into this posing suit. See you guys in a sec. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this natural lighting here. So here we go, a little front and side view real quick. And that is that. Abs are definitely gone and the bottoms on this are pretty tight, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that little sneak peek into my physique. I know a lot of you guys have been wondering, but now, Let's go get some grub. Welcome to the breakfast table. I apologize I wasn't able to get any cool footage of the actual shopping experience in Trader Joe's. They do not let you film in there, which, I mean, it makes sense. I guess some companies don't want you to like, I don't know, give them like a bad rap. But anyways, y'all, it is actually leap day today. So let me show you the time. It is 7.43 a.m. In case you're wondering, no, I don't believe Trader Joe's is open yet. It's pretty far away. I actually did that shopping trip yesterday so the footage that you saw is yesterday anyways i am excited to dig in for round one i went with one of their simple deli bur like burritos i don't know if you'd call it the deli it's like actually in their produce section and this is what the container looks like i air fried this but this is their bean and jack cheese burrito it's something that i haven't had before and i really wanted to give it a try something like salty sounded really good so that'll be the first thing i dig into and then i have some organic apple monkey bread pull apart bread really excited to try this and then over here we have some hot cocoa o's which i was intrigued by i'm only gonna have a small bowl of this i was just intrigued by it because it was only 99 cents and Hot cocoa is delicious. Anyways, again, this is 10,000 calories of only Trader Joe's food. Let's dig in without any further talking because I am super, super hungry. All right, here we go. First thing is the bean and jack cheese burrito. And I air fried this instead of microwaving it. So let's see what happened. So far, so good. Got a lot of tortilla in that first bite. Mmm. Very generous with the black bean and jack cheese. This is actually pretty good. I believe this was $3.99, which reminds me, the cost for this entire cheat day was about 40 bucks. So yeah, and this is actually really good for $3.99. Mm, I really like that. The jack cheese is nice and sharp, complements like the smooth creaminess of the black beans really well. Yeah, if you like a good simple burrito, I recommend this. I'll give this like, I don't know, an eight out of 10 because it's good for the price. Trader Joe's almond milk, shameless plug, vanilla unsweetened, good stuff. So the next thing that I want to dig into is this cinnamon pull apart bread, cinnamon apple pull apart bread. Here is what the container looks like, organic, chunky apple. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but I already pulled off a corner and tasted it, so I already know this is delicious. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dig in. This is a 10 out of 10 recommend, by the way. I couldn't resist, when I open the package, it just hits you with the smell of apples and cinnamon. It's basically a giant gooey apple fritter. Look at that, it's a thing of beauty. Mm. Yeah, 
That's lovely. Oh, man. I've already had a bunch of coffee for the day, otherwise this would go really well with coffee. And I love how easily, like, the loaf tears apart. This would be super shareable. So it's like really gooey and you can just take it and just look at that. It just pulls apart super easy. So you get nice chunks, very generous sized chunks. Mm. And it's so good. It's literally like think an apple fritter but without the crispy outside. Yeah, this is a 10 out of 10 for sure. The Trader Joe's Bakery never disappoints. That is something that I've tried before. Not this bread, but their bakery. And this loaf is just shy of a pound. So far, I think it was three or four bucks. That's a pretty good deal. So while I'm um, snacking on this, I did want to just like kind of plug. I did do that physique update kind of as an act of self-defense almost. So a lot of folks have kind of been saying like, oh, you look so much heavier. And it's like, goodness, I'm, I'm the same weight. So am I getting like super heavy? And then maybe I'm like getting a the wrong kind of body recomposition. So I just decided this morning I got up and I was like, you know, I'm feeling actually pretty lean today. Let me put on and see if my old competition suit fits from when I did my bodybuilding show. And it fit a little bit tight, but it fit. I looked fine. So I was like, eh, maybe I'll just do a physique update for everybody. So hopefully that wasn't too distracting from the video. It's been since like, I want to say like maybe August of last year since I did a physique update in a video. So yeah, hopefully it wasn't too distracting, but back to this bread. And that probably, that last thing I just said probably sounded really pompous, but there's a certain point where you have to seek body positivity <laughs> and it can be really hard when everyone's a critic. But that's part of YouTubing. Being a content creator, you're in the spotlight and everyone has an opinion. Okay, so for my, this last little bit of the apple bread, I do have some caramel almond butter here. This is not from Trader Joe's, but I wanted to put it on here because if you guys watched my beef jerky Q&A and challenge, y'all asked what my dream donut would be, which would be an apple fritter with like a caramel almond butter on it. And so since this tastes so much like an apple fritter, I have to try and pretty much just recreate my dream donut. So I got some almond butter, pretty good gloop here. This is like a massive chunk of this bread. I'm just gonna gloop it on. Give you guys a sweet close up you know, without dripping it everywhere. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see how it is. That is instant awesome. Can something become like a 13 out of 10? Mm. A hundred out of 10? Do this. Any sort of peanut butter I'm sure would be great, but this salted caramel peanut butter or almond butter, I should say. Wow. Oh man. Whew. Mm. Yeah, this solidifies. This would be a dream donut if this was on an apple fritter. Rating 100 out of 10. I will boldly say this is the most delicious thing I've ever eaten on my channel. And that's definitely saying something. All right, last bite of this delicious apple bread. Got some spread on there. Cheers to y'all. Down the hatch. Mm. What a knockout. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so last but not least, we have some of these Hot Cocoa O's breakfast cereal. They are little round, basically they look like Cheerios, and then there's marshmallows in there. So let's, uh, let's give this a shot. I'll just use some of my leftover almond milk here. Ooh, that looks like a good ratio. I like it when it's like barely milky. I hope that this makes the milk chocolatey. Let's find out. It's 
kind of interesting. Let me take another bite. These are gonna get a meh from me. I can kind of see why they were on sale for 99 cents. They must not have been very popular. I was really excited about these, but the chocolate flavor is not a very sweet chocolate flavor. It's almost like a dark chocolate. Hmm, that's too bad. I had actually got these for just my normal days of eating because the macros are pretty good. Um, for one and a quarter cups, which is quite a lot, is only 150 calories, and it also has four grams of fiber. I'll probably still use it, put it on top of, I like to do like a, a non-fat yogurt on my off days. So it'll st still be pretty good. It'll be nice and sweet with the vanilla yogurt. But yeah, this I would not recommend, but for 99 cents. I will say it does make the milk nice and chocolatey. Last bite. But yeah, I don't really recommend. I was hoping they would taste like Cocoa Puffs or like Cocoa Krispies. No, they don't. Well, y'all, that is that for breakfast. It is going to be a lovely Saturday, a lovely leap day. So I am off to just kind of hang out, chill. I normally don't film cheat days on Saturdays, but I could not miss an opportunity to film on leap day. That opportunity is once every four years. So in the meantime, I will put up the total calories for this meal and I will catch you guys for lunch. All right, crew, so it's actually only been like a couple of hours since I last had breakfast. Let me show you the time almost 10 a.m. on the dot, still leap day, which is awesome. I just got back from doing a little walk while it was still nice outside. It looks like it's about to start raining cats and dogs. So I wanted to get in a quick bite to eat before I head out and do a little bit of shopping for the morning. So I'm just doing a small little snack. I'm going to start with this orange chicken bowl, which I found in the frozen section. And the box looks like this. So it's a mandarin style orange chicken, tender batter, dark chicken meat, fried rice veggies, and mandarin style orange ginger sauce. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I also have a little tub of ice cream to do a quick dessert and, um, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to this. I wanted to try and do a lot of like international foods since Trader Joe's has a lot of that. Yeah, I figured a little Chinese food would be fun. Ooh, this is piping hot. This, yeah, you just microwave this for um, four minutes and then you like heat up like a little sauce packet under some warm water. Ooh, ooh, I like this. Y'all definitely get this. This blows any sort of like fast food, Chinese food out of the water. Really good flavor. It's like fresh and bright. Check that out. Oh man, that is delicious. And it's pretty heavy too. It says it's 13 ounces. So this is just shy of a pound of food. And I wanna say this was five or six bucks. That's a good deal. For a microwave dish? Trader Joe's is pretty hype. I'm really glad y'all came up with this idea. This is a lot of fun. So the reason I'm going to the store, by the way, is I wanna get like kind of like a hard carry-on luggage, luggage, excuse me. Cause I'm going to be going to California in like a week. And I like to have um, all my camera gear and stuff like that not loaded underneath the plane. I like to have it more carry-on style. So I'm just gonna go and get like a little hard carry-on luggage and then maybe do some like other like travel-sized like, shopping needs and stuff like that before I head, head down south, do a few uh, restaurant challenges and stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna give this like a nine out of 10. This is very, very yummy. I'm just like sitting here watching the clouds roll in. Looks like it's gonna get kind of yucky, which is unfortunate. Yesterday was a gorgeous day. First day in the 60s all year. So yeah, I'm really excited to be doing the California trip that I'm doing. I'm mostly there to kind of visit and relax over spring break, but I will be doing a few restaurant challenges. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys some more restaurant challenge content while I can. And with everything I eat today, let me know if you've tried it before. Like, I wanna know what you guys think. Do you agree with my ratings? Is there something I should have tried but missed? I know there's probably tons of stuff you guys wanted me to try, but I just couldn't get to it. This was already a pretty expensive little shopping trip for me. 
I'm really frugal, but in the future I may try and incorporate some of your suggestions just in like random cheat days. Getting down to the last little bits of rice. I'm kind of challenging my chopsticks to gills here. It's always easy to grab when there's a lot of it, but when I think it's down to a little bit, I struggle. This last bite, pretty much. Maybe. Maybe not. Fail. Alright. Third time's a charm. <laughs> there we go. For dessert, Trader Joe's has a huge, huge ice cream selection. And so I went with this maple ginger cookie swirl. It sounded delicious. This was like one of the few pint flavors that they had. Everything else is in a quart. And I like to make things easy and just finish the whole darn thing. So it looks delicious. Doesn't look very exciting on camera, but you can see the little flakes of ginger cookie in here. I don't think I've ever had Trader Joe's ice cream before. So let's see. Very soft. Let's try. That is really good. Ooh. When they say ginger cookie, they mean it. I was thinking it was gonna be like gingerbread cookie, but no, this is, they mean like ginger the spice. This tastes like actual ginger root. Mixed with pancake syrup, which is very bizarre. I've never had anything like this in my life, but I love it, wow. This gets a 10 out of 10 for originality. It's really smooth, rich, creamy. Mm. Yeah, I should have known it was gonna be good. The number one ingredient in this is cream, which is a very good sign. When you're having ice cream, that should be the first ingredient. Wow, I wish I could describe this better. It, this is a very legit ginger flavor. Yeah, this was not what I was expecting at all. I was expecting like gingerbread, not the actual like ginger root. So if you like ginger, this is for you. If you don't, definitely steer clear of this because it's a very strong present flavor. Luckily, it's an, a flavor I really enjoy. Last couple bites here. There we have it. So I definitely, definitely recommend you guys give that one a try. That was amazing. Same with the orange chicken bowl. Again, here's what the packaging looks like. Found this in the frozen section. I will catch you guys for an actual lunch in a little bit after I get back from shopping. Comment below what you're, what you're thinking, what your thoughts are. I will see you in a bit. What's up y'all? I just got back from the store, scored me a sweet carry-on. Check this baby out. Boom, look at it, super groovy. Only uh, 50 bucks for a $280 piece of luggage. Gotta love TJ Maxx. Anyways, I'm currently cooking something up in the oven and I will see you guys for some lunch in a minute. Actually, let me show you the box, might as well. So currently I am cooking up this right here. I don't know how to say this, I've never had it but it sounded interesting and y'all have been wanting to see the international foods as well as Trader Joe's stuff. So Greek Spanakopita, authentic spinach and cheese pie. So it is cooking up in the oven right now. It sounds delicious. It kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a puff pastry filled with, I don't know, like it looks almost like a spinach and artichoke dip or something. So I'm really excited for this. And yeah, I am going to meet you guys at the table with this and a little bit of dessert. I'm super pumped after finding this really good deal on luggage. So I'm gonna really good mood. Okay, that's enough talking. See you guys for some grub. All right, crew, so we are at the lunch table. Everything is done, cooked up in the oven. It is currently 1236, so it hasn't been too much time. Perfect lunch hour. So I have this Greek spanakopita in front of me. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, and I don't know why I'm doing a weird accent, but it sounds fun. So I have that to dig into, and then I also, for dessert, have a brookie, and I am very excited to dig into this brookie. This thing looks super good, super delicious. I love brownies, I love cookies. It's gonna be delicious. 
So to dig in to this thing, you bake it at 350 degrees for 30 minutes in this little paper tray. I believe it's meant to be like cut like a pizza. It's pre-sliced like a pizza. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the slices. You can't really see the pre-done slices on there. They're very fine slices, but it does say to cut it all the way through. It's a little bit mushy in the middle still. I got well past the 35 minutes it suggested and I didn't want it to burn. It's like still pretty gooey in the middle, so I'm just probably gonna eat it with a fork. But it does have like a crispy outer layer of crust, but it's pretty gooey in the middle, so. This is probably gonna trigger some people that I'm gonna eat something shaped like a pie from the middle out, but that's where it's like the gooeyest. So I'm gonna start there. Let's give this a shot. It smells good. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so, ooh, this is still very hot, but basically it tastes like a spinach artichoke dip if it was surrounded by puff pastry. That is mesmerizing. Really good flavor. Mm, the crunch of the pastry. The flavor of this filling is amazing. Wow. Mm. That is so good. I wish it had crisped all the way through so that I could eat it more like a slice of pie, but for whatever reason, the middle didn't get very crispy. It could just be my oven. I'm not sure. But. Mm. I imagine this is like the Greek equivalent of a quiche. Definitely try one of these, whether you get it from Trader Joe's or not, try it. That is just too good. I wonder if I can pick up this outer layer, like a pizza. The outside is dense enough that I can grab it and the layers are so flaky. Listen to this crunch. Mm. <laughs> that was the least attractive bite on the planet, but you could hear the crunch. So another thing, I was worried this would really need like a dipping sauce, but it's plenty creamy all on its own. The middle is so gooey. That was a slice cooked perfectly. Oh man, it was like a hot pocket lava. Yeah, I must be having some like crazy oven issues because those bites were like a thousand degrees hotter than the other bites. So I'm gonna let this cool off so I don't scold my tongue again. And I'm gonna have a few pieces of this brookie. Brookie mode. This is cut into nine different squares, but that's unnecessary. It's only one square for me. Ooh. That is a dessert of champs right there. The brownie is delicious. The cookie is like cookie dough consistency. That's a winner. This is amazing. I should have grabbed some milk. Ooh. Okay, let's try and get back to this uh, Spanakopita. That's better. Since it is sliced into sixths, I feel like this would almost be like a good appetizer or hors d'oeuvre for like a dinner party. Like, I don't know if I would serve this as a main dish because it's very rich and creamy, like a spinach and artichoke dip. So maybe that's what it's meant for is like an appetizer and not as a main dish. I don't know, if you know, say so in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm not trying to be ignorant, I just don't know. Slowly uh, working my way through this thing, trying to go at a little bit slower pace because it is so, so hot. Last couple bites here. That was definitely unique. Very delicious though. I, I think I like uh, 
Spin a copita. I'd give it a 9 out of 10 for if you were to have a slice at a time. And if you're trying to solo the thing like I just did, a 7 out of 10, because it's pretty rich. In fact, I need to go get some water and or milk to finish up these brookies. We'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. And we back. Water at the ready. Let's finish up this amazing brookie. This is pretty darn tasty. I feel like this is something like the rock would eat since he's so big into brownies and cookies. Trader Joe's is fire. They're very dense and rich. Like, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like one or two of these for the average person would completely satisfy you. These are delicious, but very, very rich. So I'm gonna leave just two squares, finish up this bite here. Mm. So with everything that I've eaten so far today, I'm going to be well ahead of the 10,000 calorie level. So I'm just gonna save these two so I can actually enjoy them truly and fully. I'll save them for a different day because these are really amazing. I'll give these a solid nine out of 10. Make sure you check those out. Anyway, y'all, I decided to pick up my camera for fun because it's fun. Yeah, I'm gonna be good to go until dinner time. It was about uh, 20 minutes of eating just now. That was a pretty slow, slow meal for me. That, that was really good. I'll go ahead and put the calories for this, minus the two brookies up for you. Yeah, I will see you guys for some dinner. Hope you guys are enjoying so far. See ya. And what is up, Kilo Crew? We are back for some dinner and dessert. It is 3.42 p.m. and I know that seems really early for a dinner, but y'all know if you've been following me for a while, I like to eat dinner really early so that I have plenty of time to digest before bed. Anyways, in front of me, I do have a lobster ravioli that I thought sounded interesting and a goat cheese ravioli. So the red and yellow striped ones are the lobster and the whiter, just plain ones are the goat cheese. Here's the packaging that this comes in. Here is the lobster, and then here is the goat cheese, and it's also sun-dried tomato. Sorry, I kind of destroyed the packaging while I was opening it. Before I dig in, I did just have one of my followers shout out to Adam. Thank you for letting me know over on Instagram. I did just find out that last night, the founder of Trader Joe's actually passed away, and so I did not know this. I guess it happened late last night. Um, I don't really follow the news. I don't have a news stream. So that was like really humbling. It kind of changed the mood of the day. So I think it's really cool that I happened to be filming this today uh, in a way to honor the founder. So as you can imagine, Joe, uh, I believe you pronounce his last name, Cologne. He had a really big impact on his company and the way it was ran. And the reason why it is so successful is because he treats his employees really, really well. So. A big shout out to him, his legacy, rest in peace. I hope that his family is at peace. It seems like he lived a really long, good life. But yeah, not to be super somber, but that definitely changed the tone of the day. So uh, this is for you, Joe. Thank you very much for having such a cool store. Enough of the sad stuff. Let's dig in to some of this lobster and then also goat cheese ravioli. I don't know if this needs sauce or not, so I'm just gonna try it on its own. Basically, it comes prepared and all you have to do is boil it. So, ooh, that's still piping hot. And I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I destroyed my mouth during lunch <laughs> on that pie thing that I already have forgotten the name of. <laughs> Spanakopita. Ooh, these are huge. I don't know how to eat ravioli. I never eat ravioli. Like, I'm eating it with my hands. I feel like a savage. Ooh, the lobster one's really nice. It's kind of sweet flavored. I wasn't expecting that. The filling tastes like a mixture of lobster and maybe like a Parmesan. Mmm. Yeah, that is really good. I was worried it might need like sauce. I don't think it does. Okay, that was my first bite of the goat cheese one. Mmm, I think I actually like the goat cheese one better. I saw the lobster one and I was intrigued because last week I filmed the Terry Crews cheat day and he did a lobster mac and cheese. And so I was like, oh, I found lobster ravioli, let me try it. The lobster, I'll give like a seven out of 10. This goat cheese, nine out of 10. This is really good. 
yeah, if you're into goat cheese, I recommend that. And I also found these like that burrito this morning. I found these in um, the vegetable section, oddly enough. Mm. That is so interesting, seafood inside of a pasta. Who'd have thunk it? Ooh, that one's hot. Ooh, I'm like scared now burning my mouth. I'm gonna switch to the, seems like the little goat cheese ones didn't get as hot. These raviolis are massive. Since I'm so basic, whenever I think of ravioli, I think of like Chef Player D and how small those are, which I know isn't real ravioli. This is the real deal. And it's so good. I love goat cheese. Oh, these are so hot though. Um. Mm. I hope it's not too lowbrow me eating these raviolis with my fingers. <laughs> They're just so big, they're hard to like cut with a fork. Ow. They're so hot still. I don't know why, I let them cool off for a while. I feel like there's an animal eating these with my hand. <laughs> I can't remember who it was. There was like a YouTube channel where they were comparing was it? Anyway, he was comparing ravioli to like Asian dumplings and those are finger food, so. Maybe it's okay, maybe it's like asparagus, you're allowed to eat them with your fingers, I don't know. But we've gone all around the world today. We've done Mexico, China, Greece, now Italy, and then dessert. I honestly have no idea where this is from. I'll tell you the name of it when I get to there. All right, one of each ravioli left. I'm gonna save the goat cheese one for the last bite because that's my favorite, but here's the last lobster ravioli. Just again, look at how big this thing is. That is crazy. Bon, bon appetit. That's really good. Okay, so next up, we have something called a chocolate Brooklyn Bobka. I have a feeling just by the way it says Bobka, I'm guessing that might be Russian, but I have no idea the origins. If you know, let me know. I did not bother to look it up, but this is the packaging that it came in, chocolate Brooklyn Bobka. What I have on my plate in front of me is about three quarters of the loaf right here, but let me show you, actually, let me just pick up one piece and show you the beautiful flaky layered marbling. Look at how lovely that is. And it's like super flaky. And then on top are these delicious chocolate chip morsels. So again, I'm only eating about three quarters of the loaf of this. The entire loaf is like 2,500 calories and it's well over a pound. I'm crazy, but not that crazy. I, you know, I don't want to get super flavor fatigued and this will definitely put me at the 10K either way. So I am ready to dig into this. This looks delicious. Again, if you know where this is from, obviously it says Brooklyn, but the country of origin, whatever a babka is, let me know. Huh. It's cakier than I thought it would be. It's really good and chocolatey though. It's the texture of a cinnamon roll as opposed to the texture of like a croissant. I was definitely expecting like a, like a light flaky croissant texture. This is really nice. Wow. Now that I'm eating this, there is a lot here. I do not know if I will get through this. I may very well fail this 10,000 calorie cheat day. <laughs> just because these are so big. That is crazy. These are incredible though. So I think this was the most expensive of the baked goods I got. I want to say this was like over $5, but I can see why it's really high quality, very flaky, buttery, 
but then again, cakey like a cinnamon roll. As you can see, it's like falling apart in like layers in my hands, but the chocolate is really nice and decadent. Wow. This is actually really amazing. This would make a great breakfast. I just have some um, iced coffee in here. Mm. Oh yeah, now that I'm doing this, I probably shouldn't have been so frugal. I should have gotten a little bit more variety while I was at Trader Joe's. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can handle eating large quantities of the same thing all throughout the day. No big deal. But I think that was kind of a poor strategy, knowing that that giant brick of cake that this came in would probably be near impossible to eat after a full day of shenanigans. Unless you're like Matt Stoney or Beard Meets Food, then that's no big deal. <laughs> But either way, I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. I'm gonna get through as much of this as I can. Well, I think I'm gonna finish <laughs> this piece of this cake right here and save these other two slices again for a different day. I am definitely satisfied. And although this is really good, I am tapped out on chocolate. <laughs> After the brookie earlier, plus this, I love chocolate, but there is a certain level, so I'm just gonna finish this up. Mm. The operation well, <laughs> so I'm down to these last two slices here. I am going to call it right there. I believe I'm in the ballpark of close to like 9,500 calories. If I wanted to, I could probably force these down, but I'm trying to have more fun with the cheat days and make them more of like a theme thing as opposed to like a grind hard sort of thing. I like to keep it pretty enjoyable. And these actually were so tasty. I kind of want to save them for when I can truly enjoy them. They are very chocolatey and wonderful. Definite nine and a half out of 10 for these. But anyways, this has been a really fun cheat day. A lot of different stuff that I discovered over at Trader Joe's. They have great things. Again, a very sobering, sobering day. Um, thinking about the founder, the guy who made this all possible, passing away last night. Um, anyways, not to keep it a Debbie Downer, we should always celebrate life. So a big thank you to Joe and my thoughts are with his family at this time. So if there's any other themed kind of challenge cheat days that you would like to see me go do, let me know. I would like to try and do about 10,000 calories of a specific food type in a day and uh, see what we can explore. seems like that's a pretty good number to hit to try a lot of different things. So thank you very much. Again, please like the video if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And thank you so much for watching. Until the next video, this is Katina Eats Kilos. Thank you so much. Until next time.